Hey, what's going on? And happy Friday to you. It's Friday today. If you're looking at this video and it's not Friday, imagine it is, or go watch Friday, one of the two. Anyway, my name is Norman Anthony Coulter, but uh, that's not even that important. I wrote this book, and it's bathroom reading size, because it's not that thick. It's an easy read. It's not even 100 pages long. Let me tell you what it's about, though. Um, it's called 12 Lessons I Learned from Not Playing Basketball. And uh, that's actually the subtitle. The title of the book is Six Man, The Six Man, 12 Lessons I Learned from Not Playing Basketball. And uh, since this is one of those videos where you pump your own book, let me tell you what it is and what it's about. Um, one day I started journaling at nighttime just for some catharsis. I started to write and reflect a little bit on everything I felt like I learned from sitting on a bench. If you've ever been an athlete, you know that the thing you would never want to do, the thing that many of you may have done and didn't want to do, or some of you were maybe the superstars of your team, so fortunately you never had to do it, sit on the bench, man. Um, the bench is a humiliating place to be. It is the antithesis of what you perceive to be success when it comes to the athletic, to the athletic world or the athletic experience. Everybody wants to be in the game, man. Um, and everybody wants to start. But if you know anything about basketball, you know that not everybody can start. There are usually about 12 or 13 guys on a basketball squad and uh, five guys start and the first man off the bench is called the sixth man and the sixth man is usually your best player that comes off the bench um, for example last year the Lakers have had Lamar Odom and other teams have some pretty quality people who come off of their bench and you know honestly I think most coaches will tell you if you don't have good bench play if you don't have good reserves to come in the game you lose period well I've had many episodes in my life through basketball over the better part of about 25 years because I played I started playing back I first picked up a basketball when I was about nine years old I, I was terrible and um, I played until I was about 30 you know I went on and played in uh, junior high just like a lot of people do at PE right lunchtime league champions are and all that stuff then I got to high school and tried out for teams and made the team thankfully was able to play at the varsity level you know for a couple of years and do all that and I was able to actually play in college too which was fun Got a chance to play over at Chapman University. Um, division three. It was Division two. They went down to Division three, and so I went to a non-scholarship college and played basketball, which uh, at the time I felt was kind of humiliating to do. And uh, but for the better part of that 15 or 16 years that I played basketball competitively, um, I learned so many things in retrospect about my motive. Um, I, ha I learned about false motives I had. I learned about my inability to submit to the truth. You know. We often say, you know, we see a bunch of people every week on shows like The Voice or um, shows like American Idol, you know, that that we, we would probably say shouldn't be performing in front of the world, but yet they are. And, um, you know, we find that that's about with the truth. You know, a lot of people, including ourselves, including myself, you know, I've had trouble submitting to, to the truth throughout my life. And um, there's a lesson in that. So I went through and I identified 12 things that I felt like I learned from sitting on the bench. The kind of things that if you really start to reflect um, on those things will, will help you to move forward. And it ends up being like a, like a one-man advantage you have. It's like in your life, you have somebody coming off of your bench. And so I wrote a book about it. So one episode I write about in the book, right? I have this chapter where I talk about how in 1999, I went on this trip to Southeast Asia to try out for a basketball team in, in the Philippines. And um, this was finally my opportunity, my finally my opportunity to play professionally or at least put my game in front of some guys who could help me to play professionally and I was I was I was really looking forward to doing that and I was hoping it would be the end of this notion of uh, always getting close always being on the team always having the opportunity to maybe excel and then finding that it was dashed you know but it didn't happen you know two weeks into it um, I was down I was out in the Philippines for about two weeks got to try out got to work out and uh, ended up on a plane coming back home for a lot of different reasons and at that moment, and I had a lot of decisions to make about who I was as a person, where I found my identity. And um, one of the lessons I learned was, was, was wrapped up in so many other lessons um, about who I am as a person and why, and why I exist and, and how I can add value to a team. And uh, that's what this book's about. And I want to recommend it to you. I think that in reading about other people's stories and journeys, we find our own journey. And uh, my hope is that you not only start to understand your own journey and story, but that you actually want to write about your own story and your journey. Because I think as you write about it, you begin to understand it a little bit more clearly and you kind of see 
the divine uh, fingerprint on your life and you begin to understand how you can make your life more meaningful than it is today. How many, how many people do you know who are dissipating and destroying themselves, medicating their lives? I've never met a person on drugs or on alcohol who wasn't doing it to, to ease the pain they experience every day that alarm clock goes off. But I'd venture to say that what if there's another solution? What if there's a way to acknowledge the truth in such a way as to embody, your, to, to embody that truth and actually to live through it, to let it live in you and to find your true purpose so that you're not just aimlessly wandering about having pity parties on a, on a regular basis, right? Nobody ever shows up for those. Anyway, you can order the book if you want it. It's a cheap read. Not only is it a short read, it's a cheap read. You can get it on um, Amazon.com and at BarnesandNobles.com. You can also go to my website and check it out. But this is the book. This is what it looks like. The Six Man, 12 Lessons I've Learned from Not Playing Basketball. And my name is Norman Coulter Jr., so that's the name you should see on the book. You see somebody else's name on the book, and they plagiarize it. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, I'd love for you to read the, read the book, get inspired by it, contact me, let me know how I can help you. Um, I think there's a lesson in every, every part of our lives that God wants us to uh, activate, man. And if you're not living truthfully, then you're not living at all, man. You're wasting time. Um, so let's stop wasting time and let's get in the game. Let's play our six man. Let's enjoy life and let's contribute to the teams that we play for. All right? All right. If you like doing the Twitter thing, I do it. Why not do it, right? You only live once. Might as well tweet. You can find me at six man. That's at six I X T H M A N. At six man. And then my website is simply sixman.com. Look forward to talking to you guys or maybe not talking to you. I look forward to just the fact that you might pick up the book, get inspired, and write your own. All right, that's all I got to say. That's six minutes, six minutes.